Oh, maybe he can. We're recording. I don't know where we're recording, but we're definitely recording. It says we're recording. Um, hi, welcome to uh, the Package Manager Special Interest Group Weekly Catch Up. I am Aching Brain. I will be your host. Uh, actually, Andrew is probably going to be the host because he can see the crit pad and I can't. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Andrew because he uh, has way more, um, you know, uh, information than I do. Cool. Uh, over to you, Andrew. Um, cool. Uh, I'm sure I have some information. Yes. Uh, so we can do some up updates of what we did uh, this week and what we're planning to do next week and anything that we're blocked on. Uh, I might as well go first. I have been doing um, some further work on my little IPFS NPM republish library that I demoed last week. It now has, uh, it's considerably more robust. It actually works with every different kind of package, including namespace packages, um, the only things it doesn't work with are Git dependencies right now. Um, but you can also publish directly to IPFS rather than having to now, like previously you could republish something that was already on the registry uh, by pulling it down and then putting it onto IPFS. You can now publish using the, uh, the command line straight to IPFS and it generates you a new registry with all of the dependencies for your package. This works uh, mostly offline if you already have those packages um, downloaded as well. So you, you can do offline publishing. Uh, it gives you an IPFS mini registry URL, which you can then share around and other people can install from your, from your IPFS node and then start to share between everyone. We tried it. Um, I sent Jim the link, uh, the CID basically, and it worked, uh, which is very cool. So that might be um, something to put together a little um, video talk for IPFS camp, um, which is something that I'm planning to do. Uh, we also did some further road mapping, follow up call from a week and a half ago, um, planning the kind of global state of what package managers is going to look like for IPFS over the next six months. It's still kind of ongoing. Um, there's a link uh, possibly added to the crypt pad. I'm not sure if that's a public page or not yet, um, but hopefully we should have some resolution by Friday on that. Uh, I also have spent the past few days doing a in-depth look into the new Entropic uh, federated package manager from uh, the ex-CTO of NPM. I just published that. Uh, I'll get the link added to the crypt pad shortly. Uh, and I think there's a lot of promise in it uh, as well as it having a lot of internals that look very similar to IPFS. Uh, I think there's a way that we can um, actually be able to propose to add not just different kinds of content store that would, but also different kinds of hashing algorithms. This would basically mean that rather than saying like, well, it's IPFS or it's SHA-256, uh, kind of just uh, one or the other, this means that for each individual instance, they can choose how they want to store their content. And for every different uh, instance that is running the IPFS store, they're essentially all going to be sharing data. Um, there's no details yet on how different instances would sync packages between each other. Um, but the interesting part there is that uh, hopefully IPFS would be able to provide a lot of that kind of automatically for free. Uh, the, the real powerful part is if you can have the registries or the registry instances store their content in IPFS and deliver the hashes over the HTTP API, then the clients can fetch the content from the DHT, which may only, like there may only be one node in there, which is the registry, which has that content. But then the client is a second node that has that content. And then 
anyone else who mirrors that from um, installs that and then starts mirroring it like nicely strengthens the availability of the content across all of those um, registries but it's not entirely offlineable because you still need to be able to make the initial request to say for this string of package what is the um, the equivalent like uh, uh, has for all of the version that have been published. So there's some thinking there to do, um, but naming and um, naming is hard in IPFS. So especially human friendly names. So that uh, is probably another step down the uh, the implementation tree. Um, I think that's everything for me. I'll get those links in a quick pad. Um, Jessica, do you want to go? Yeah, um, I actually threw your Entropic write up in the crypt pad on your behalf. Sorry to speak for you. Um, I was largely hung up on like lightning talk stuff, honestly, this week for camp. Um, but I did um, you know, get to take part in all the roadmap discussions that Andrew mentioned. Um, and then also um, added a bunch of info and cleaned up both the main um, SIG README and then the docs README. So hopefully that should be a lot um, more helpful for newbies to either you know, to, to IPFS and package management, um, which I think should help us a lot at, at camp, especially and and obviously everywhere. So um, if anyone has any feedback on that, let me know or just um, make some changes in a PR. But um, that is more or less it at that point for me. Jim, did you have anything to share? Um, just uh, we we tried to uh, try out your uh, the your code. I forget what it's called, and then uh, we, we it, it revealed uh, it was a good test. I thought for content discovery, and the IPFS network has been having problems with content discovery all week. Which uh, there's been a the Gateway Tiger team has like identified some of the issues and. Uh, Basically, everybody has to should upgrade to zero point or the latest Go IPFS node like right away if they're running the old version. Um, and because all the old versions, in the, all the old buggy versions out there on the network are sort of slowing the thing down. So um, that, I think that what we did was actually a really excellent uh, potential test case for some of the uh, simulation work I'm going to be doing. So. Yeah, if you're using IPFS desktop, I think you can just restart it and it should automatically update you to the latest version. And it comes with um, the IPFS command line that can be installed. So the latest version of IPFS desktop is very cool uh, and the best way to use it uh, in my opinion. Has anyone else got any updates? Um, I've been trying to um, clear up some NPL and IPFS PRs uh, with an eye to get a new release out that's up to date with, um, you know, the latest JS IPFS. Though I was thinking of maybe switching it to be Go IPFS um, to start publishing IPNS names of all the documents because um, that would then enable some interesting, you know, uh, use cases of being able to resolve uh, documents using IPNS names rather than rather than having to go through our central registry for it. Um, I'm also trying to work on uh, NPM in a box for the science fair at uh, IPFS camp. This, this is it right here. Um, ironically, it's not in a box yet because the box is being shipped from China and it hasn't arrived. Hopefully it should arrive before I leave for Barcelona. Um, so that's going to be fun. But yeah, I want to get new versions of NPM and IPFS out and also get it deployed on um, you know, some kind of scalable uh, container service. Um, I've now got access to the AWS stuff that I need, like my account in order to do that. So hopefully I'll be able to do that over the next week. Um, that is me. Any questions? Andrew. How much storage is in that little box? Uh, 12 terabytes. <laughs> RPM, wow. RPM is big. <laughs> NBM is really big. Um, something 
I, I love this idea. I think it's super snazzy. Um, are there any other things that we want to bring along with us and have local IPFS copies? I think it's come up in some of the, um, in some of the courses that like, you know, being able to suck the latest uh, version of IPFS, the latest, you know, given that we, we could be looking at local versions of some of the packages that folks will depend on um, yeah. for, for a variety of things, it'd be really useful to be able to grab them. So probably NPM has a vast variety of things. Um, if, there's, if there's anything else probably useful to, to think about bringing a, a local version and making it available over IPFS. Yeah, well, I can cash other things on the on the box. So just um, yeah, send me a list of things that you want me to put on it, and I'll put them on it. We just yeah. upgraded our internet connection to fiber here, apparently, so that should help with downloading large things. Very nice. All right. Okay, I'll surface that back to we're we're developing a list for the for the various courses of like what is the stuff you're going to need. So um, we'll surface back from that uh, if anything comes up. Cool. Just out of curiosity, how much? Did your not in a box in a box cost? Uh, Four hundred pounds, five hundred pounds, something like that. That's not bad. Most, I mean, most of it's hard drive. The rest of it's just, um, you know, a Raspberry Pi, a, a SATA bridge for the Raspberry Pi, and then a box to put the whole thing. Yeah. Storage is cheap. Bandwidth is expensive. Cool. Well, I think that is everything. Uh, and we will see you next week for another package managers working group update. Not working group, special interest group. <laughs> Bye.